Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ACW Newscast number 61, I believe. I am Hakeem Johnson, your ACW commentator, as always, and I think this is going to be a pretty long newscast. I'm trying not to make it as long as it needs to be, but um, with the certain topics and questions and answers you guys want to uh, discuss today, it could be as long as it needs to be. Now, granted... I'm not going to be able to answer every question that you guys sent me. I'm just going to answer I'm going to answer some of the questions and comments you sent me and then talk about some topics what have. You. So, there you go. Well, welcome to the newscast. <laughs> um before we start the um just want to take a brief um mention, you know, to take some brief time to uh um acknowledge and uh send the condolences to um um the family and friends of um Mr. Um, Leonard uh, Leonard Nimoy um who you all know if you are a Star Trek fan or Trekkie um you all know of him obviously as Spock and um he passed away um this week um he was 83 years old he, um he just recently actually went to the hospital for some coma-like symptoms, I believe, and um, just passed away, I believe, on Thursday. I mean, sorry, on Friday, if I'm being honest. Um, now, let me just kind of uh, preface this. Let me just um, just state that I was I was not the hugest Star Trek fan. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of guy you'll see at a Star Trek convention or get into the culture as such like that, but I do respect the culture, I do have a bit of admir admiration for the culture, and um, even though I wasn't a huge Star Trek fan, um, I grew up watching the show when I was a kid, you know, it was one of those shows that I would watch on Saturday afternoons, you know, you know how you would after Saturday morning, your Saturday morning cartoons were pretty much done, and um, you know, one of the shows that would come up afterwards would be Star Trek, and you know, I just grew up watching that because, you know, sometimes we would ha we wouldn't even have basic cable; we would just have our local channels to watch. And you know, Star Trek was an entertaining show to me to watch. And you know, Spock um, was one of the more endearing characters that I grew up with. And um, you know, Star Trek was a really um, groundbreaking TV show for its time. Um, for the way it dealt dealt with the social issues, the way it had its um, multicultural, multiracial cast, and um, how it just pretty much changed the sci-fi genre for a cult following back then. It was only three seasons originally, so you know Spock, um, like I said, was one of the one of the more endearing characters, second in command to Captain Kirk, um, and. Um, you know, even though he was getting there in age, and you kind of expected it to um, be, you know, his time to, you know, pass. Um, it's still shocking, um, still sad that, you know, a childhood, you know, character that you grew up with. And I'm probably a lot more people grew up with it than I did, and that's fine. But I can, I can, res I can relate, I can grieve as well, you know, so... Um, I just wanted to take just a few you know, minutes to talk about that, and um, um, we love you and we miss you, um, Mr. Nemoy. Um, we will never forget you, and we will always have the memories that you gave us as we grew up. Thank you very much, and wherever you may be, as long as you can live long and prosper, that's all that matters. Thank you, Mr. Spock and rest in peace. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, we're going to get to your questions and comments. We're going to get to them now. We're going to actually do that early. And then we've got some things we want to talk about. I want to talk about the ACW League Tournament, why that's going to be postponed for tomorrow. We're going to talk about DCA and its return in March. Um, we're going to also talk about the road to WrestleMania so far and maybe other WWE-related news. And if we have enough time, we will talk about um, the big news in terms of net neutrality, the big victory that happened um, this week. So that should be um, some questions that um, – I mean, sorry, that should be some topics that I'm able to talk about. If you can just kind of tell 
uh, my voice is kind of deep and uh, hoarse because, you know, commentary stuff. <sighs> yes, I am drinking water live on a newscast. Deal with it. Um, Alright, let's see. Let's get some questions and comments here. And again, I'm not going to be able to answer every question and comment that was sent to me this week. Um, I'm just going to be able to answer some, not all of them. So if your questions weren't answered or if a specific question of yours wasn't answered, I do apologize, but I just can't be able to answer all of them. So, all right, let's see here. Hmm. Let's see, Charles Johnson asked me, what do you think of SCAW currently? I still think it's one of the. I think it's still one of the standard bearers of uh, CAW. Um, like I said before, you know, if you really think about it, from the golden age of uh, CAW, um, the only like still prominent colleagues that are out there from that era um, that are still around is SCAW and ACW. If you really think about it. Um, I mean, you don't have no DQ call anymore. You don't you don't have a lot of these colleagues. You don't have slam and jam. You don't have that. You know, and you and also UWO too. You can actually include UWO as well. So yeah, SCAW, UWO, ACW are still some of the colleagues out there that are still active today. That um, you know, are coming from that age, from that era, but. You know, I'm still a fan of SCAW. You know, SCAW and ACW started pretty much around the same time. So, you know, it's always been um, it's always been just great watching um, Lone Star do what he does, and he's still doing it very well. Um, enjoying Edward Elk's reign as champion, liking a lot of other things like the Axis powers. Um, you know, just just I'm, a lot of things. I'm liking a lot of things from SCAW still. So I'm still a fan, even though I'm a car owner myself. I'm still a fan. Um, let's see, question number two. Um, do you watch any of the superhero shows? Flash, Arrow, Gotham, Agents of Shield. And if you do, what are your favorites? I do not because, um, to be quite honest with you, uh, I don't really have the time to be watching TV shows like I used to, and um, I I don't know. I just with comics. I kind of, um, and no disrespect, but I kind of grew out of them. I've kind of grown out of comic books and comic book shows. So, like, if I watched a comic book show, I would be asking what the hell's going on, and I, all the people that are into that kind of stuff are going to just look at me like a noob. So, But um, I watched a little bit of Gotham. I haven't really caught up with Gotham lately, but um, I'm planning on trying to in the future. But um, all the other shows I have not watched, so I apologize. Um, question number three, do you ever watch the current Adult Swim Toonami? And if so, what is your take from the downgrade of time from 6.5 hours to 3.5 hours? Um, to address the second point, I think it's stupid that um, Toonami is getting downgraded on a Saturday night. Because at this point, um, Saturday nights are Toonami. They are Toonami. I mean, I love King of the Hill as much as anybody else, and I might think it's the greatest anime of all time, <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you get King of the Hill every other day, you know, you get, you know, Bob's Burgers probably some days, Ricky and Morty, I love that show, by the way, too, you get Family Guy, God knows, almost every day on Adult Swim, so the fact that, you know, Toonami can't even get its own full day, like it's gonna kill somebody, you know, it's just, I think it's a little bit ridiculous, because, um, there are a lot of anime shows out there that are dubbed that you can really put into those time slots. So, um, I do watch, and as for watching Toonami, sometimes I'm usually out on a, I mean, it's Saturday night, I'm doing what I'm doing, but, but, you know, when I, um, you know, when I do, you know, stay home on a Saturday night, I maybe catch Toonami once in a while. Um, so, there you go. I, I, I think it's stupid for the downgrade with Toonami, personally. Um... Let's see. Carol Star asked me a lot of questions. I'm only going to answer some of them, though, so. Let's see. He asked me, thoughts on NXT being better than the main WWE shows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, NXT's pretty much been the premier brand of the WWE for about at least six months now, I would say. 
about a good six months, even a year if you want to argue that. But um, that's just how it is. I mean, Triple H is pretty much uh, controlling the NXT brand, so he's got more freedom, more leeway to do what he wants to do. And he it's a really good traditional show in a more modern style way of presentation. And um, it's really good for what it is. Um, I think sometimes people do overrate NXT, um, you know, with all the four-star, five-star classics. But they are really good matches. And now they're starting to implement stories now as well. You know, one of the problems with NXT is that they didn't have enough stories or they weren't any good stories. Now they're doing that. So, yeah, NXT has been the premier brand. I mean, better than Rock, clearly better than SmackDown. So, you know... That's what happens when you know what the pulse of pop culture wants in terms of professional wrestling, and you actually give it to them. So, there you go. Uh, let's see. Thoughts on CM Punk turning down Jason D you know, Jason David Frank as his first UFC fight? Eh, I think that was more of a publicity stunt than anything. Honestly, I think um, the Green Ranger, if you will, and CM Punk are working all of you guys. I think, you know, I think they're actually cool in real life, actually. They're cool friends, so, you know, he's just, you know, asking that for publicity stunt and just to help CM Punk get more publicity heading into his first UFC fight, so, nothing really big. Um, do you ever, do you even mention, bruh? No, I don't, uh, I do not, bruh. Um, <laughs> um, have you ever watched any Kamen Rider or Super Sentai? No, I have not. Um, I have heard of them, I am aware of them, I just have not watched them. Just probably not my thing. And I know I'm saying that because even though I watched Ultraman Tigger before, but yeah, not kind of not my thing. Um, in terms of gaming videos, do you have a favorite YouTuber? <sighs> I don't know if I have a favorite YouTuber, YouTuber, but some of my favorites, um, Total Biscuit, probably is one of them. Um, Attacking Toucans is out there. He's really funny with his uh, pl um, let's plays. Um, Abdallah Smash, he's really good. If you're a Nintendo fan, he's a really good YouTuber, YouTube gamer. Go check him out and give him a subscribe. Um, hmm. What else? I've never been really asked this question before, but I do watch some. Um. Ah, uh, who else? Uh, these questions always put me on the spot here. Um, yeah, yeah, those, those are, those are the three I would, those are the three that come up to mind, I can't even think of the other one, sorry, um, let's see, Raymond Charles Deadly the third, very proper, <laughs> asks me, um, are you going to watch the new Digimon Adventure tri-anime? Yeah, I've seen, I've heard the trailer, I'm, I might even go see it maybe after this newscast, but um, I've heard about the trailer, um, the new Digimon series. I may watch it just for nostalgia reasons, like I did with Sailor Moon Crystal. Um, will I stick with it? Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't get me wrong. I, I was I always liked Digimon. I just I I don't know. I was just more of a Pokemon guy. But I did still like Digimon, though, because it was different. I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd probably give it a shot. No problem. Are you a fan of role-playing? Are you saying role-playing in terms of um, E-Feds? Um, not big on that, really. I, you know, I mean, I, not that I disrespect it or anything, or, but just kind of not my thing. Role-playing, I don't know if you're talking in terms of social media role playing or gaming role playing or just cosplaying or I don't know but if you're talking in terms of uh Facebook role playing yeah I don't kind of I really don't do that just not my thing just kind of don't see the point of that and um gaming role playing um I I don't do it but I know a lot of people that do I know some people that do and it seems and it's fun for them um larpers if you will I know that they do that so I I always um respect and understand why they like doing it because it's a culture to them and cosplaying i'm a fan of cosplaying because you know it's a good way to you know just show your admiration and love for a show or a character or what have you or a genre and just be yourself and that's the important thing you want to be yourself so let's see 
Vinny Christian from, aka V Pack from YouTube. Go follow him. I'm tired of telling you guys this. <laughs> but he asked me, did you watch that slap on Titan episode I tagged you in? If you haven't, I check it out. It's really hilarious. No, I haven't. I have not watched that episode. I did see you tag it, so just give me like a day or two. I'll catch up and watch it. I got a lot of things to catch up on, actually, in terms of what I need to watch, but I'll watch it. Um, I came up with a concept for an entrance theme for Aaron Yeager if you have him use his Titan form in ACW. Interested in hearing it? Sure, I'm interested in hearing it. I mean, Animania 4 is, you know, a couple months away, so you never know if I can use that for good use, so yeah, why not? Let me let me know. Let me see how it is. Okay. Let me see here. I gotta pull up more questions here. This is what this is what you get for um postponing a newscast. Where you're supposed to but the thing is though, I postponed the newscast because, you know, I had things I had to do and I can't I c I I couldn't, you know, get out of those prior commitments if you will, so it is what it is, but at least I'm answering the questions now. Let's see. Joshua Howell asked me some questions. Any ideas on who's finally going to take the SCAW title from Edward Elric? That is a good question. You know, I initially thought it would be Anakin. I thought Anakin was going to be the final guy. I thought Anakin would be the guy to actually end the reign. And if he did, I would have been fine with it because I think Edward Elric has been champion long enough for where an Anakin can come in and just take the title from him, and they would be and it would be believable. But he lost at Winter Slam, so that kind of is uh, a good guessing game. If you did watch Winter Slam, um, Spider Man came out to attack Anakin, uh, and I hope I hope it's not leading to an Edward Elric Spider Man uh, feud. Because I'm kind of past the point of Spider-Man as SCW champion at this point. Sorry, I just, I'm just one of those guys that really doesn't want to see Spider-Man as the uh, SCW champion anymore. That's just me. I think Spider-Man had his run, his run during his career in SCW early on. But I think Spider-Man is, I think Spider-Man is being used really well for what he is right now, a a legend in ACA, I mean a legend in CAW call period, and SCAW that can elevate you know, future cause in SCAW. I think he's perfect in that role. And I just don't have any interest to see Spider-Man in, in an SCAW um, title reign again. I just really don't. But as to who's going to end it, it really could be Spider-Man. But also, I could say Superman. Superman's also a good pick. Um, hmm. I, I would like for it to be Dante as well. Dante would be also a good way to, um, you know, get that started for his career. Also, who I can, also who I can also see taking it, Brian Erlacher. He's been undefeated, and his undefeated streak is starting to work now. So can, can you imagine Brian Erlacher being undefeated, taking on Edward Elric, who has been SAW champion for a while? That'd be a good matchup. I think that's a matchup that you know Lone Star needs to put in consideration. That could be a big, huge draw for SCAW right now. Brian Erdelacker versus Edward Elric. I think it could really work with the circumstances. You don't got to turn any of them heel. Just face versus face. That's it. Let's see. Brian Douglas asks, uh, Who is your favorite Super Smash Bros. character from the, either the past games or the newest ones for the 3DS and Wii U? My favorite Super Smash Bros. character is always going to be Kirby. I know it's kind of weird coming from me, but... I always kick ass with Kirby. Kirby is very underrated when people use him. I think people don't give Kirby the um, credit he deserves in terms of what he does in the games. Another person that I like using is, is Captain Falcon. Um, he's really fast, so he can really be uncontrollable if you can't control his speed. But other than that, I like throwing punches and kicks whenever I can. It really works into my favor. Um... I think also another one. I think also another one that I'm a fan of is um, Donkey Kong. I think he's gotten better as the uh, progression of the series, the Smash series has uh, gone forward. So Donkey Kong is really someone that is really useful for his, um, you, you know, for his size and agility. So I like Donkey Kong as well. Um, let's see. Um, any chance of seeing some Clay Fighter characters in ACW? I played. Clay Fighter on Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and Nintendo 64. I'm I'm not fond with Clay Fighter. I'm not fond with that game. I guess I, I never had it, so I never played it. So 
I don't know much about it. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, three. What did you think of uh, CXWI's Golden Ambition Six? Well, I was trying to watch that show with no spoilers. Obviously, that did not happen. Got spoiled pretty quickly. So I haven't really finished it. I haven't really finished it. But um, I'm surprised Hard Glory won his match though. So shout out to Hard Glory representing ACW winning his match there at Golden Ambition Six. I think um, Elliot and the crew over there at uh, CXWI, so far from what I've seen, have done a pretty good job at what they're doing for their show. Um, I, I would tell them to keep up the good work. Um, don't get deferred or don't get, you know, discouraged because certain booking decisions or because certain people um, don't like how they were booked. At the end of the day, you're the booker, you're the owner, and they're the wrestlers, quote-unquote. You have the power. They don't. Um, let's see. Gary Connell Jr. asked me some questions here. Let's see. What is your thoughts on Kanye West still being a giant douche and sucking up to Beyonce every chance he gets? By the way, I can't stand it. I'm always, I'm always conflicted with Kanye West in that sense because, on one hand, he's one of the best producers of all time. And I don't regret apologizing saying that. He's made great music all over the years. He's even a good rapper, too. Or at least he was a good rapper. Um, but late, but for these recent past couple of years, Kanye's attitude is why people will never respect him in a certain light. Because his intentions are good, but his attitude and, his, and the way he comes off doing it is so arrogant and it's so hypocritical too if you want to think about it you know this is Kanye West talking about how corporations are evil and how corporations tie you down yet you're working with um I believe it's Nike to release your Yeezus boost so you know the Yeezy boost so how can you just how can you how can you complain about corporations when you're essentially working with one to release your product, when you can just have you have enough money, profile, and power to start your own company and release the Yeezus Boost the way you want to release them, why don't you do that? Why don't you want to do your own black-owned business if you want to talk about that? No, you're just gonna use a company, a corporation like Nike, to put your stuff out there, and then you're married to a woman whose whole family is in itself a corporation at this point. So Kanye comes off as really hypocritical. I I I hate when all these hipsters and all these uh people that want to act cool think that Kanye saying some new shit that no one has ever heard of in this lifetime that Kanye's some sort of, you know, genius buying his intricate pseudo intellectual bullshit. As if, you know, he's the next Tupac in the way he talks. The difference between Tupac, though, is that Tupac went back and helped the community. Now, Kanye has done that as well. But with Tupac, when he spoke, people listened. When Tupac spoke, people listened, and they learned something coming out from that. You don't get the same vibe with Kanye, at least with me. So, Kanye is one of the better... When it comes to music, Kanye can be untouchable. But when it comes to stuff like, you know, politics and, I guess, fashion and him just thinking that he's the most important person in the world, I can't stand it because it pisses me off and it makes me regret listening to his music. So, yeah. Question number two, what new hip-hop albums are you looking forward to? Um, um, let's see. Looking forward to the Kendrick album coming out this year. Um... I heard Big Sean's got a new album. I've never been the biggest Big Sean fan, but I heard his that was his best album as of late. I do got J. Cole's recent album. I do have Lupe's recent album. Lupe's album is freaking awesome. He's going back to his fucking um, food and liquor and the cool roots, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, so those are some albums I'm looking forward to. Um, question, let's see. Uh... Let me answer this question. 
And I'm almost 30 minutes now. Give Divas, a, give Divas a chance. Is this a ploy or real, by the way? What are your thoughts on AJ Lee basically dropping a pipe bomb like CM Punk on Stephanie McMahon? Um, first of all, it wasn't a work. She really meant what she said. Because there's, it wasn't an angle to build Stephanie versus AJ Lee for WrestleMania. Because there's not enough time to do that anyways. And I don't even think it's really meant for when AJ Lee returns a few between her and Stephanie because I just don't see that. Um, so I think I think AJ really meant that. I think AJ just really meant that, and Stephanie got pissed seeing that, and um, just to save face, just had to give a very corporate answer back on on Twitter. So I think I think this is more the fact that AJ is getting ready to leave the WWE. I really do think so. I think she really could be gone by the end of this year. I think she's um, made enough money that she's saved, and also she's married to one of the still hottest commodities in professional wrestling, CM Punk. And CM Punk has wisely saved his money all those years, and he's going to be making money with his own future endeavors. So I think AJ's pretty much set at this point, and she doesn't really have to really tow any company line at this point. I mean, she's pretty much done everything that she can at the, at the WWE. Multiple-time Divas champion has been involved in major storyline angles, has um, been a draw in terms of divas, and even in terms of overall in the WWE. She's pretty much done it all at this point. She doesn't really need to prove anything else, or she doesn't really have to accomplish anything else. So There you go. It wasn't a work. It was a um, 100% shoot. AJ meant what she said. Stephanie got pissed, tried to save her own ass, and... Uh, give a corporate answer. She probably will face punishment, but I think it's more the fact that AJ is pretty much done with the WWE at this point. I think she's getting ready to leave after WrestleMania. That's just my opinion. Um, Jeez, all these questions. Let's see. John Blackos. I saw the 2008 ACW draft, and I saw Ike and Roy from Fire Emblem. Hmm, did there did there were members of the ACW? Roy and Ike? They weren't, they weren't there. I don't recall. I never recall using Ike and Roy in the 2008 draft. I don't think I had them there. If you're talking about the uh, draft generator, if you're talking about the draft generator, yeah, they were going to eventually debut in ACW, but I kind of cut that off, and I was on hiatus anyway, so that was just not going to work. But other than that, I didn't actually have them at the show. So let's see. You're the commentator for DCA, but what other original colleagues do you watch? If you count CCL as an original call league, then that would be one. Um, my good old friend Loudon recommended me to his league, TCW apostrophe. I mean, sorry, asterisk. Um, starting to watch that as well. I was never. I used to never really be the biggest original call fan, but I'm starting to get into it now. Obviously, you got uh, Call of Honor, COH. I do watch that as well. Um, they're doing a good job there as well, by the way. Um, I used to watch WEDF, but I'm kind of fading off from that as well, so, those are some colleagues that I watch, though, um, let's see, let's see, Garak Weevil asked me some questions here, let's see, and I'm going to answer some of them, um, do you think there's any connection between Naruto's face-off at the draft and that Y2J promo that aired after the movie, alright, we need to address this right now, people have been, you know, talking and asking me, you know, what the hell, I mean, what what ha what was that promo at the end? I have no idea what are you guys are talking about. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I honestly don't. Because I looked back at the ACW draft, and it went as smooth as it did. Like, it ended with Naruto and Trunks staring down at each other, and then we w went off the air. So, I don't understand why people keep bringing that up. They've been bringing that up for about a week now, and I don't see it. They're saying there was this Y2J-like promo. I'm like, what are you talking about? It, the, that end of the show, were you watching the same show I was watching? It was Naruto and Trunks staring down, and, and I don't know what that even means. That could be in a future Impulse title match, I don't know. But, that's what I saw to end the show, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. Let's see. Now that Joe Agashi's on Excel, what is next for the Young Lion? I honestly don't know. It was a shock that Joe Agashi was drafted to Excel after being a pillar, a staple in the Cruiserweight division on Impulse, but hey, Joe Agashi has been one of the biggest stories of last year for ACW, so for Excel, he can do a lot of things, and I think he can really do them too, so 
it's just a lot of um it's just a lot of uh you know opportunity there for him let's see for let's see what are your thoughts on dragon ball xenoverse p s don't check the cake in the fridge someone may have eaten it who ate my cake oh it was you all right wait till this newscast is over <laughs> anyways um dragon ball xenoverse um i think it's pretty cool it's an open world for Dragon Ball the Z. Um, some that needed to be done a long time ago, by the way, but whatever. Better late than never. Um, I haven't bought it yet. I haven't played it yet, so I w can't really tell you how I really feel about it. But um, other than that, I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, will I get it, though, eventually? I don't know. That depends on how the uh, situation goes. That depends on how I really want to, you know see fit to it, so, alright, Torn Anthony Fuker asked, um, let's see, what are your thoughts of the passing of RWBY creator Monty Um, I, I've never watched, I, I haven't, I don't watch, um, RWBY, but I am aware of it and familiar with it, and I do know, and I am familiar with the creator, and I saw that the reports that he passed away unexpectedly. Um, it was pretty sad for you fans. Pretty, pretty sad. And um, you know, with, even though I, you know, even though I don't watch the show, I can at least send my condolences and respect towards him. So hopefully, wherever he is, you know, his fans don't forget what he's given and what he's contributed towards their lives. And uh, hopefully, his memory is not forgotten. So um, rest in peace, Monty. I honestly believe that. Um, two, why does Seth Rollins and Jon Stewart have a beef with each other? I think it's cool. See, this is why, this is what I like in terms of celebrity involvement with wrestling. I don't like it, I don't like when celebrity involvement is forced. See, um, Raw guest host from 2010. But in terms of this, you know, Seth Rollins made a kind of joke about he can run the Daily Show, and then Stewart responded, then Rollins responded, then Rollins went to the Daily Show and offered uh, John Stewart to come to Rollins to do something about it, which might happen tomorrow night, which I'm looking forward to. That that whole segment on the Daily Show uh, on Friday or Thursday is what kind of sold me on this Raw coming up on Monday. So um, I think it, I think it's cool, and it gives more um, exposure to Seth Rollins, someone that's gonna possibly be a future player for the WWE. So I mean. It's a win-win for both ends, you know? And it gives Stewart something to do, because, you know, Stewart's going to be leaving The Daily Show this year, so, he, you know, he wants to make his uh, final run, his final year pretty entertaining for everybody involved, so it's a win-win. Um, let's see. Kavaja Humphrey asked, What can you expect from WWE 2K16? Pretty simple. Better to be than WWE 2K15. How about that? I hope the 2K16 is really, really spectacular because 2K15 was a disappointment if, 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 in all aspects for call owners and you know call creators. It it just that has to be the biggest disappointment of 2014 WWE 2K15. I'm sorry because we were because I remember we were all hyped. We were all hyped for the possibilities. We were all hyped that you know with 2K fully now taking over the WWE series for the games, that it was going to be a whole different thing, that it's just going to be the greatest thing of ever, but it turned out to be a big disappointment. So, hopefully 2K16 can be better, because it can only get better than 2K15. Let's see. Alright, and Hugo Gun Con uh, Hugo Goncalves, there you go, asked me some final questions here. Um, how did you make the ACW Championship belts graphics when the referee is showing them before the start of the match to the ACW draft? Um, Photoshop. I'm pretty creative. I'm a pretty good, uh, graphic designer. Um, I like to make, I like to, you know, as ACW evolves with the, uh, climate of, um, car these days, I like to make my presentation look nice. I like to make my presentations of shows look professional. So, you know, I always like to experiment with stuff that could work with ACW. And that's what I've been doing with that this year, starting this year. So, 
you know, I just use Photoshop, try to be creative with it. Um, I'm a good graphic designer, video creator, so that's just kind of how it rolls. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts about the draft picks between Excel and Impulse? I thought they were pretty good for the most part. Sasuke got drafted to Impulse. That was a shock. No one saw. No one really saw that coming. Well, some did, but some really didn't. You know, Elric going to Excel as being a staple for Impulse for so long. He goes to Excel now. Joe Agashi now, after being the cruiserweight division, is now going to Excel. You got Ken Masters now going to Impulse, splitting the Street Fighters. You got a tag team in Ikki and Seiya going to the um, Impulse brand. You got Ash Ketchum now, after being assault, you know, before being assaulted by Brock and Gary. Now he's going to Excel. You got Choji now splitting from Kenkuro going to Excel. You know, you got Cloud Stripe going to Excel to start something fresh. Same thing with Salt Snake going to Impulse. You know, you got a lot of you got a lot of things good going there. So, 2015 for ACW is going to be very, very interesting. I can promise you that. Let's see. Um, have you considered about adding Cora from the Legend of Cora to ACW? <sighs> it's been tempting. I was I've I've been tempted to do so. Um. <laughs> I still can't believe that ending, by the way. I just, that was, uh, just, it was, I don't know how people feel about that ending to the series, but I just kind of thought it was, um, I just thought it was kind of unnatural. I thought it was forced, to be honest with you. And I know people are just going to be like, oh, so you don't like gay rights, you don't like gay rights. <sighs> okay. I have no problem with, I have no problem with that. You know, I have no problem with, um, I have no problem with homosexuals. I don't have a problem with gay marriage. I don't have a problem with that. I am in support of that. Apparently, now, granted, I have my certain beliefs that will differ from what others think about that issue. But ultimately, I do agree with the likes of gay marriage and people having the gay rights and stuff like that. I do agree with. But that's not relevant to this point that I'm making here. I mean, I just thought that ending was kind of forced. I think it was kind of... Uh, it was fan service. It was just a way for people to get their panties wet. So, but anyways, back to the actual question. Cora, never say never. I mean, I mean, you've got Aang still. He's the XL champion. You got Zuko. I had Sokka for a while. So, you know, Cora coming into ACW probably more likely for the Glamour X division on Excel. It's a possibility. So never say never. So there you go. Well, thank you guys for your questions here for the newscast this week. I appreciate them, obviously. Um, make sure if you have a question to send me for the ACW newscast that you do so by posting your questions on the ACW newscast status on Facebook and Twitter. When we do ask you for those questions, and then when we read the newscast, we will when we do the newscast, we will read those questions and answer them. So, thank you everybody for uh, sending me those uh, questions. I do appreciate it. Now let's talk about some topics real quick, and I am 40 minutes now into it, so let's see if I can end this under an hour. Um, first of all, let's start with ACW. Um, now, today was supposed to be the start of the ACW League Tournament, but as I said, due to certain things that I were out of my control, I had to postpone it for tomorrow. So tomorrow, it's going to go like this. Tomorrow will be the start of the ACW Elite Tournament of this year. Um, you're going to get two matches from Monday through Thursday. So that means you're going to get two matches tomorrow, you're going to get two matches on Tuesday, you're going to get two matches on Wednesday, you're going to get two matches on Thursday. And then on next Monday, you're going to get one match of the quarterfinals, one match of the quarterfinals Tuesday, one match of the quarterfinals Wednesday, one match of the quarterfinals Thursday. And then, sorry, I was going to burp. And then the week, I think that's the week we return, ACW fully returns. Then we will do the semifinals, the two semifinal matches on a Monday, and then Tuesday will be the finals of the tournament. We'll explain all this as we get to the ACW Elite Tournament tomorrow. We'll go in more into detail to that. So, there you have it. The Elite Tournament will be hosted on Impulse this year. Should be exciting. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, interesting favorites here. Um, the first round of the final, uh, the first round of the tournament will start obviously tomorrow. And the matches for the first round are as follows. Verona Zoro versus Ryu. Brock versus Monkey D. Luffy. Lucas versus Dennis. Sasuke Uchiha versus Solid Snake. Rin versus Mugen. Kyo versus Dark Magician. Ness versus Ken Masters. And Aaron Yeager versus Ryo Magician. That's going to be a lot of great matches that you're going to get to witness this week. Um, and there's also a lot of favorites in this match to win the whole tournament. So, 
I'm going to throw this question out to you guys. Who do you guys think is going to win it all? And pick only one. I know it's going to be hard, but pick only one. Who do you think is going to win it all this year for the Elite Tournament and why? I would like an explanation as to why you think that person you chose is going to win it all this year at the Elite Tournament. So make sure you can make those answers down below on this video or on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you may be that I can see it. And I might read some of the answers or I might even just put some of your answers scrolling down on the videos for the quarterfinals. So there you have it. Um, so yeah, so we'll see the 2015 ACW Elite Tournament officially begins tomorrow night on YouTube. So there you go. Now let's also talk about another colleague that I'm also involved with, DCA. As you know, DCA had its um, season one finale, which was Revelations, which was about a month ago. About a month ago. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, so we had that, and um, there were a lot of uh, mixed reviews. Um, some loved it, and some hated it. Um, I and the people that say they hated it are just saying it for their own reasons that I will not go into. But they know who they are. They're just certain people that. Um, are trying to sabotage what DC is trying to do. It is what it is. <sighs> Water. Um, so, um, DC is coming back this March, and as you guys all know, I am the new lead play-by-play -play commentator for DCA going forward now with Season 2 starting next this month. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and... Um, I've seen a lot of things that's going to go down for DCA this year. It's going to be a bumpy ride. So, all my ACW fans, I would really encourage you to not only watch DCA this year and watch what's going to happen, but I would also like you guys to subscribe on their channel on YouTube or like their pages and like their pages on Facebook or follow them on Twitter. Because, um, honestly, DCA is going to be one of those shows that's going to be um, that's still growing to this day as one of the better um colleagues out there today. So you know, so I, I would really encourage you ACW fans, if you're a fan of mine, if you're a fan of ACW, watch DCA this you know, this year. It's gonna be a great roy it's gonna be a great ride. It's gonna be way better than season two. I, I mean season one. I can promise you that. And more information about DCA's return will be made in the coming days as we get close to that date. Well, now, let's talk about some WWE news and TNA news, shall we? Well, let's start with WWE first. The road to WrestleMania. Getting a little bit bumpy here, huh? As everyone knows, the official main event will be the Royal Rumble winner of this year, Roman Reigns, taking on the current WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Brock Lesnar. Um, a lot of mixed reviews and reactions towards that main event. I think people already know my opinions on that. I think... Um, Listen, I don't think I don't think Roman Reigns is ready either, but for how they built him and for how they are going to move forward with him because he is going to be the next guy in the WWE, period. I'm sorry, that's just the reality of it. Um they had to go with Roman Reigns here. Um I would have preferred John Cena be the champion heading into this match. It would be Cena versus Reigns, a little bit of a passing of the torch. It would actually be um 10 years it had been this would be like 10 this would be the 10th anniversary i guess of WrestleMania 21 when Cena's was when JBL passed the torch to Cena for him to become the new guy and become WWE champion so it would have been a good symbolic moment there but Reigns is still going to win the title now will Rollins cash in i don't know that's kind of up in the air at this point but i think Reigns is going to win the title from Lesnar Lesnar reportedly on Monday uh walked away from the show, he was supposed to be actually staring down Reigns at the end of Raw on Monday. Um, he walked out. There's a lot of rumors as to why he did so. There are some rumors that um, Roman Reigns failed a drug test. The WWE is trying to cover it up from it not getting at the dirt sheets. And there are some rumors that uh, Brock Lesnar had some problems with his uh, new current uh, contract obligations and negotiations. And he walked out because he felt that he wasn't getting the pay that he thought he deserved from his previous one. There's a lot of reasons, rumored reasons, but um, it does p makes you wonder. You know, you put your eggs in this Brock Lesnar beast m basket. You had him end the streak last year. You had him squash John Cena to become the champion. You've had him become a monster as the champion for this whole time. And now you're putting your main event almost in jeopardy if Brock Lesnar doesn't get his way. So, 
that's what you get really for letting a part-time champion not show up with the title and then put the title at risk. So is Brock Lesnar going to try to sandbag Reigns? This is going to look like um, him versus Goldberg at 20? I hope not, because I think Reigns needs to have a signature WrestleMania moment, and this would be it. So hopefully that works out. Hopefully. Um, also, you've got also now Sting versus Triple H. That is also official at WrestleMania. The WWE are trying to build this as a, are trying to build this as a dream match. It's really not a dream match. I don't think anyone has really um, made Triple H versus Sting as a top tier dream match. The dream match everybody wanted to see when it turns when it comes to Sting in the WWE is him versus the Undertaker. Period. And I honestly think they should have done that this year. I don't think Wyatt needs to face Taker this year, and I don't think Triple H needs to face Sting this year. If you have both of them in your company. If you have them at the same time, yes, they're old. Yes, their gimmicks are pretty much not what they used to be. But that doesn't matter. It's the nostalgia. It's the whole spectacle. Sting versus Undertaker, WrestleMania 31, you should have done it this year. But now that I'm thinking about it, maybe you want to have a big selling point for WrestleMania 32 in Dallas at the, at the Cowboy Stadium. So maybe Sting versus Taker there would be the selling point. Hopefully. Because you got to do it. Like You can't just have Sting in the you know, company and not go with Sting and Taker. That's the dream match everyone wants to see. So, yeah, that would that would be, that would baffle me if we don't get that dream match either this year. Well, we're not getting it this year. If we don't get it next year at WrestleMania, period. Um, let's see here. We also now got apparently a rumored, well, now it's kind of official by WWE now, but apparently the Intercontinental title will be defended in a multi-man ladder match. Now, the Bad News Barrett will be defending that title against some rumored people. It could be Dolph Ziggler, um, Dean Ambrose, um, R-Truth of all people, and Daniel Bryan. And I got to be honest with you, I don't like that. I mean, WrestleMania 30, you kind of built that show all around Daniel Bryan. You had him defeat Triple H in the first match of that show, and then you have him defeat Randy Orton and Batista to win the World Heavyweight title, the WWE World Heavyweight title. You know, so he pretty much defeated Evolution and won that title at WrestleMania 30. The show revolved around him and his journey to be that guy. And now you come here to WrestleMania 31, and you just throw him in a meaningless, icy ladder match. Yeah, the match might be good. Yeah, the match will make everybody, you know, mark out and everything. But at the end of the day, what does that really do for Daniel Bryan? I mean, the icy title really, really doesn't mean anything. Let's be honest, it doesn't really mean anything in today's day and age. So with Brian holding it, it's just a way for WWE saying, well, we'll let you hold a title. Well, we'll let you still be an important part of the show. You're just not going to be, a, you know, the the guy that you were last year. That's what it tells me. That's what it sounds like to me. And that just tells me that the WWE still doesn't get it. That they award um, people getting naturally over by cutting them down, throwing boulders at them, which is stupid as all hell. So... So apparently that is what it is at WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan. I would prefer, I would rather have Sheamus return, turn heel, and fight Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania this year. I would rather have that. Because at least with Sheamus, you can still build him as a heel. He can actually defeat Daniel Bryan and still be a really big heel going forward. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of that idea. If you're going to do a ladder match at WrestleMania, why not just bring back the Money in the Bank match? Like, it does, like the Money in the Bank match really doesn't need its own pay point. Because now we have, like, one world title. So we don't really need a Money in the Bank pay-per-view to emphasize that. So, whatever. Um, so, yeah, other than that, you know, this WrestleMania so far is looking pretty predictable. And sometimes predictability is not a bad thing. But in this case, it kind of is. And I'm really not that excited for WrestleMania this year. Um, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling the WrestleMania spirit in this road to WrestleMania right now. I just, I just don't have that energy right now. I don't feel it. Um, last year I kind of did. This year I really have none. So, hopefully they fix that, but they got about four weeks to fix it. And they better make sure it's the greatest four weeks we've ever seen. Or else this could be one... Very, very, very mediocre WrestleMania, which is what I'm predicting it to be. This could be almost 27 bad. That's how much. That's how much I'm, you know, 
expected it to be. So, well, there you go. So, we're about 15 minutes here, so I'm about to end it here. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to talk about the net neutrality thing. I'll talk about that maybe on another time, but I'll end it right here. 15 minutes has passed, and I got things to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this ACW newscast. I appreciate you guys for sending me your questions as always, and you can, like I said earlier, send your questions to me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and I will answer them and do it at the best of my knowledge. And uh, thank you for listening to this newscast. The ACW Elite Tournament will start tomorrow night. So get ready. Start getting your picks ready. Start picking your favorite. Who do you think is going to win it all? Make sure you comment down below. Who do you think is winning it all? Starting on Monday for the 2015 ACW Elite Tournament. Who's joining the likes of Broly, Sagat, and Kinnick Man in that echelon of, of that group of uh, top-tier echelon talent? Who do you guys think is going to win the whole tournament starting Monday? So make sure you give me that answer there. But as always... Thank you for joining us, and as always, as I'm still rambling, <laughs> stay cool, everybody. Stay cool. See you later.